In the last video, we were working on making a ball bounce uh, as if it were affected by gravity, and we had a little bit of success doing that. Today, I want to make the ball move not only up and down, but also left and right. So let me start here by getting rid of the cat, and then we'll get a new sprite and bring a ball in. And we'll move the ball here for our starting position and grab this go to XY block so we can put it back there when we want to. Now, to make the ball move left and right in addition to up and down, we're going to use something called a vector. And in this case, a vector is just a pair of numbers, and it keeps track of the speed in each of the two directions. So speed of the ball moving in the x, x direction, that is left and right, and the y direction, up and down. So to describe the behavior of this ball, there are really going to be four numbers. There's its x position and its y position. Those are two numbers to show where it is on the screen. And then there's also the, the x value of the vector that shows how fast it's moving in the x direction and the y value of the vector. So x position and y position are built in in Scratch, but I need to make variables for my vector. So I'm going to call the first one vector x and the second one vector y. All right. And what we're going to do in our, in our loop, our central loop here, we'll use a forever loop, and we're going to change the x position by the x vector. So we'll be adding that uh, x vector to the x position every time through the loop. So we'll go to motion and we're going to change x by vector x. And we'll do the same thing for y. Now we haven't put any values in vector x or vector y yet, so we need to do that as well. And I think in this case, I want the, the program to have a little bit of random behavior. I don't want it to move in the same direction every time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set vector x and vector y to a random number. And I think we'll do a random from, I'm going to choose 5 to 10, because remember, this represents the speed, and 1 means we change the position of the ball by one pixel every time through the loop. That's pretty slow. So this will be a little faster. And I'm going to just duplicate that block. Whoops. I actually ran that code there. I'm going to pull this off. There we go. All right, so we're setting the x and y vectors to these random numbers. And then we're going through the loop forever, changing x and y by those vectors. So let's see what happens. Aha, uh -huh. so that time it took off at a diagonal uh, uh, to the upper upper right there. Let's try that again. And that seemed to do the same thing. Try it one more time. So why is it always going to the upper right whenever I do that? Well, what I've done here is I've chosen positive values for both x and y. And as x get, gets bigger, it moves in this direction. As y gets bigger, it moves in this direction. So we're starting from this point, and we're always moving in that direction. So although the speed I picked is a, is a little bit random, the direction is not uh, very random. It'll vary a little bit, but it'll always tend in that direction. I could alter this to add some negative values in here. I'm not going to do that right now. What I'm going to do is make it bounce. So when this ball hits either the top or the side, I want it to bounce. And you may remember from the, uh, the gravity ball uh, video that when you bounce something, you change its velocity by making it a negative of itself. So if the velocity was 10 in the x direction and it bounces off this side, you suddenly want that velocity to be negative 10, so it starts moving in the other direction. If it hits the top, you want to do that to the y. 
So we're going to do that with a couple of if statements. So we're going to look at the, let's check the x position first. So if the x position is greater than So x position greater than, and let's say 230. I know it goes to 240, but this ball is pretty wide. So we'll just say 230. So if the x position is greater than 230, what we want to do is change the, the x number in the vector to the negative of itself. We want to change it to the negative. So we'll take set vector x. And then we'll do the multiplication operator because we want to multiply it by a negative 1 to get the negative of that value. And oh, minus 1. And then we want to do the same thing uh, on the other side, too, if it to, to bounce it off this other wall. To do that, I'm just going to um, duplicate this block. Actually, let me make the print a little smaller here. So if the x position, and now here we're going to need a, a less than instead of a greater than. So if the x position is less than negative 230, we again set the, the vector, the x part of the vector, to, to the negative of itself. In that case, it'll already be negative, and when you take a negative and multiply it by a negative, you get a positive. And then we'll do the same thing for the y position. So I'm going to see if I can copy this whole block. Yeah. And instead of x position, we'll choose y position. And we'll just have to change the value slightly because y only goes to 180 here. So I'm going to change this to 170 and negative 170. And then we need to set vector y to the negative of itself. So instead of vector x here, we'll put in vector y. Whoops. OK, I think that should do it. So. Cross our fingers. Let's uh, go ahead and run this. Huh. So it looks like Y is not changing at all. Oh, and nothing got assigned to vector Y. That's weird. Why didn't we get that? This line of code seems like it didn't run. And there's no value in vector Y. Let's stop that and just start it again. I'm going to try putting this on here. Double check that we're changing vector y. Change y by vector y, yeah. All right, let's start this again. Huh, looked like it moved up for a second and then stopped. Where is my error? Oh, there it is. Look. Set vector y to nothing. So we want that to be a negative of itself. So let's duplicate this part, stick it in there. Hopefully that fixed it. Whoa, that's cool. All right, let's figure out what we're doing wrong here. Oh, I see. I put this in the wrong spot. <laughs> So vector, and we were supposed to say if the y position is greater than negative uh, or greater than 180, and I put that in the wrong spot. So let's go over this code again. Actually, I was going to say 170, wasn't I? OK, that looks better. Wow. Let's try this one more time. Aha. Ah, uh, there we go. We're getting the bouncing. So in coding, there are often bugs. 
and figuring out how to find your bugs and fix them is one of the chief things that you do as a coder. So now we've got a bouncing ball. 